Hello, my name is Zombie878 and welcome back to another tutorial video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a save system that you can save wherever you want on the map. And you can just exit the game when you want and join back and you'll be in the exact same spot you were when you left. So let's go ahead and get started first. What we're going to do is we're going to get a trigger handle. I'm going to get an animation gizmo and then place my trigger handle so it doesn't fall down to the ground. Typically easier to work on it when it's floating in the air and I don't have to worry about it dropping like that. So let me go ahead and just get it back up here. Connect it to my animation gizmo. Turn it on. You don't need beta content for this by the way so uh, yeah. You can do this in a room without beta content. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have it to when we click the trigger handle, it will save our position and uh, rotation. So go ahead and get a get position chip. And after you get the get position chip, you also want a get rotation chip. And now that you got that, connect that to the player who presses the trigger handle. So down here. Now it gets the player's position rotation of whoever's holding the trigger handle. That's why it's not getting mine right now. If you want it to be local player, you can connect it to local player. But I find this easier to do with a trigger handle. Now that you got that, we are going to type in a variable. Because next we want to get a variable that will hold our position and rotation. So to hold the position, we should have a vector 3 variable here. And we will get a quaternarian variable for the rotation. Now, if um, you're going to know what this does, you're probably going to want to rename it. So I will just rename mine the position saved, submit that. We also want it to be on a cloud variable. So make sure you have yours on a cloud variable because it will save between rooms. Now we want rotation saved. So we know what this one does. Make sure cloud uh, variable is on. Let's go ahead and connect our vector in this. And now when we press the trigger, it will save the person's position and rotation. Now, I would use the destination room variable, but this chip specifically cannot go into a cloud variable. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get an int variable and I'm going to assign a number to each room. So let's say this room is 0, the next room is 1, 2, etc. So I'm going to make this 1 right here. Go ahead and reconnect that to this. And of course I want to make this a cloud variable too. Now if I press the trigger handle, it's going to save the room number. Let's um also go ahead and change the name of this so we know what this does. Always nice to be organized room number saved okay now if we click on the trigger handle it will save the number that we put here the position rotation now what we want to do is we want to get a event receiver this is going to happen when we enter the room so uh we're not exactly going to use this yet but we're going to place it here just until we get things ready. So go ahead and put a event receiver that has player joined. Mm. Actually change that the room load it so uh, because the room only loads one time. And then we are going to copy the position saved and rotation chip. Make sure you got snapping on to make it easier to snap on the dings. 
we don't need the room number up here because the room number is a little separate. So after we got all that, let's get a set transform. And what this is going to do is it will take our position and rotation that was saved and it is going to send us there with the exact position and rotation. Now the target is going to be local player. So you can get a local player chip or if you really want you can just change this to player joined you might have a few problems if you do this but you know you may not and now that we have this set up now this will save our position rotation room number and this will get our position rotation when we enter the room so let's go ahead and just add something so we know this is room one now that we got that let's uh save the room and after we save the room we're actually going to copy this subroom because we need multiple subrooms that test out this save system that works across rooms we're also going to rename this to uh room zero one because this is the first room that we are um this is the first room that we are going to test it out in. And now what we're going to do is we are going to copy this room two times. And we are going to name this one room two. I'm only going to test this out with two rooms, but uh, you, um, everyone else looking at this, they can do a whole lot more. I'm going to name this one the main menu. And now I'm going to go over to room two. And there's only one thing we're going to change about. Well, actually, two things are going to First, we're going to change. Yeah, you see, uh, that's what I meant. Sometimes when you join these rooms, it, it's just a creation thing, though, when you're creating. It's going to send you to the room origin every time. So if you are making this in your room, you probably shouldn't set this up quite yet. Otherwise, it's going to send you right to the origin of the room. And you probably don't want that to happen. So what we are going to do is just change up how the room looks. Just so I can be like, this is room 2. And we are also going to change the room number save to 2. And that's actually it. We can go ahead and uh, save this room. And then we can go to the main menu and, you know, just to wrap up this whole save system thing. And I'll show you how it works a little bit. So let's go to the sub rooms. And here, um, don't need the thing where it actually gets our position and rotation in here. So what we can do is we can actually just delete this. We don't need that. We don't even need these chips. We just need the room number chip. We can actually disconnect that and change that back to zero. So I'm going to get a text uh, variable. I've, I say text variable. I'm going to get um text and I'm just going to place it right here somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and delete this in the back of the room. We don't need that no more. And let's go ahead and make this continue. So you know that when you click on this, it will continue. Now, I am going to get this small cube over here and I'm going to configure this tag to uh, continue. I'm going to make it so you can click on this with the trigger handle and you don't have to actually go up and click it. So let's give this the tag of continue and uh, make sure you add your tag. And now that we have the tag, um, what we are going to do is get a raycast. You don't need CV2 beta that I have a raycast. 
So raycast. And we're going to place the raycast right here. Let's move over this. We don't need this just yet. So what this raycast is going to do is it's going to get a position, get a direction, and get what is in front of that direction. Uh, so let's say I get the position of... Uh, need to get position chip. Get the position of the trigger handle. So I'm going to place this right here. And I'm going to connect the trigger handle to the get position. And it will be the start position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a laser pointer now. Because the laser pointer, not only is it going to tell us where our player is pointing the um, stick, the click on it. But it also tells us... Um, well, it's going to tell me where my uh, click is going to be because I'm going to set the forward vector of it. So let's put the laser pointer thing up here. Let's get a clamp gizmo too. So uh, when we pick up the trigger handle, that's not how you spell clamp. Um, so when we pick up the trigger handle, the laser pointer follows. So let's just get our clamp. And connect it like that. The laser pointer is very small, so I'm going to configure it and make the um, scale bigger. Let's make it a 50. And since I made that 50, I think I'm also going to make the raycast 50 too. Just so it stops right where the trigger handle stops. But anyway, let's get forward vector so type in that and what this is going to do is like I said get where the laser pointer is pointing the forward vector of it so I'm going to put the forward vector in the direction the starting position is the trigger handle and it will get the direction the forward vector of the laser pointer which is that way and the ray cast will just tell me what it hits, like it's hitting the sandbox wall right now. Or if I get in a way, it tells me it's hitting me. Okay, now that we have that, we are going to make it so it will read the tag of anything that it gets. So type in if, if has tag should come up. And now if I... Combine the object here, and whenever I click the trigger handle, and the tag will be continue. Now, when I hit the continue block, it should send me to uh, wherever I was before. So, here's where the room number save comes in. We are going to get three equals chips. So, we're going to get one. We're going to get an if chip, and we're just going to copy it down two times. So, place the if next to it. And we are just going to copy this once and twice. Okay, and now if it has a tag, it will go to either this one, that one, or this one. Based on what is true and false so we're going to combine all these to the room number save this one's going to be zero this one's going to be one and this one's going to be two the reason i have a zero one is so i can uh, tell people that if they haven't saved yet they uh have to start a new game so let's go ahead and get a subtitle to show that off I'll place a subtitle right here. And let's say I say to the player that they have no save. They have no save data. Basically means they need to save the game. 
And there you go. If you have room number zero, which I have right now, and I click on the continue block, it's going to tell me I have um, no. Okay, so the block just wasn't big enough. Make sure your block is big enough. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we will type in room. And we should get the chips we need. Destination room constant. And go to room chip. So with the destination room constant chip, it's going to get a room that you put in there and it will send us to that room in our case we're going to put room one but the thing is you need to actually type in the name of the room so make sure you know what the name of the room is 2655 is the number at the end of my room so i'm going to go over here and i'm going to type in zombie 879 maker room it's going to be different for you, and I'm going to type in 2655. I think that's what the number was. And as you can see, now I can place the subrooms. This will be room 1. And I'm going to just copy this down so I don't have to retype the room name. And I'm going to say this it will send us to room 2. And now that it's all set up, let me save the game. And I will go to a uh, room one and I'm just going to go to a random location and click the trigger handle and you will see when I go back to the main menu, it will um, send me back to that spot when I click. Now, when I start the room, it sends me to the origin point, but that's only because I'm creating it right now. So. It's not going to happen to someone who's new. If they're new, they got to click on new game. They're not going to be skipping rooms like you. Um, and now I'm just going to grab this. Let's say I get on this giant block right there. And I don't know. Let me click the trigger handle right there. You just heard it. Okay, now I will go back to my main menu. And then I'm going to click on continue. It's going to load room one. It to load the position. And it's going to load the rotation. And I'm going to be in the exact So if you like the video, uh, leave a like. And uh, if you want me to cover how to make it so you can save items in the room too. Let's get like uh, 10 likes. Okay, so if you liked, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.